Hello and welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event today. I'm Jennifer, your facilitator, and we have some fantastic schools um, here to present. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button, though, on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can leave a question for all of our representatives to weigh in on about a certain major or program you're curious about, but you can also direct your questions to a specific school or schools by including their name in with your question. This is just one of many different sessions that have been happening. For students, we hope you've enjoyed the other programming for Minnesota students. Um, and this program, like all of those other sessions, is being recorded. And it's going to be available at that same website where you signed up, strivescan.com slash Minnesota. I'm really excited to get started tonight and turn it over to our first school. We're going to be learning about the University of St. Thomas. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Um, my name is Tom and my coworker Yang are here today and we're going to use our six minutes to give you a, a brief overview and then Yang's going to hit some of the fun new flashy stuff. So in terms of the overview, University of St. Thomas is a four year private Catholic university uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota. It is equal distance from both downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis and it's located in kind of this like historic cozy residential Riverside area um, in St. Paul. And so the students who are typically most drawn to the University of St. Thomas often cite themselves as being sort of like in between in terms of size and location, right? They, they don't necessarily wanna be downtown, which is perfect for some students, but they don't wanna necessarily be in the full countryside, which is perfect for other students. They're kind of that in-between student who wants to, you know, one minute they wanna be kind of sitting by the river reading a book kind of relaxing and then maybe that evening they want to go down to first avenue and catch their favorite band uh at a packed at a packed arena so that kind of in between uh, location person as well as size were kind of like the kind of like the biggest small school you can find so in terms of academics it mirrors what you would see at your small liberal arts university scattered across the country so a lot of our tour guides have similar stories of professors putting cell phone numbers on syllabi and uh, inviting the class over for like a pasta dinner after the final exam. So the average class size is 21 and you get a lot of that like kind of warm, cozy family feel stories academically. Uh, but we are the largest private university in Minnesota by quite a bit. And so we do have 6,000-ish uh, undergraduate students. So some events draw a lot of people, right? Um, our athletics, St. Thomas has a lot of school spirit and that rah-rah atmosphere to it. So a lot of our big games draw thousands of people, concerts, homecoming dances, popular guest speakers. So sometimes you'll walk into a room and you'll know lots of people if it's kind of that family feel atmosphere, especially academically. Other times you're walking into a you know national tournament volleyball game or something like that and there's a packed crowd so those in-between students who are kind of like they like that middle location that middle size those students tend to get really excited about St. Thomas after leaving so Yang what what are some fun new things going on at St. Thomas these days yeah thank you Tom that was super exciting so first off just want to say that something really new that happened this summer is that St. Thomas in terms of athletics jump from division three to division one. So we totally skipped division two, y'all. I'd like to say we're not cool. So, uh, so with going to division one and competing competitively, we're super excited to really even grow our school spirits here at St. Thomas, but not only that, but get more out of state students as well and really help diversify and grow our community here at St. Thomas as well. So that's super exciting. Um, not only that, but we also have two new residence hall called Tommy East and Tommy North. And something cool about them is that in Tommy North, in the bathroom, you need to have an ID to get into it, which I was like, wow, technology. So that's super exciting for me too as well. But not only that, but our other five dormitory for freshmen are all renovated too as well. And so it's a way for us to really ensure that our freshmen coming into St. Thomas feel comfortable and welcome as well and be at a safe space as well. So that's super amazing. Um, not only that, but um, we at St. Thomas are also adding an additional theme building. Um, more information, it is a $100 million multi steam building that we are planning to have it open and running in the year of 2024. 
Um, so we're super excited to really e extend that um, in, in terms of our theme department as well. So super, super cool. Uh, and then another uh, update about St. Thomas is that we also are going to have a projected nursing program uh, starting up at St. Thomas as well. And it is projected to have our first class cohort um, starting the fall of 2022. And so these are some updates about St. Thomas. I'm gonna give it back to Thomas to wrap it up. Yeah, so that's uh, those are some of the new happenings. You got some new res halls, some new programs, some fancy new science buildings. Um, but the core of St. Thomas is still the same. It's that kind of like homey liberal arts university with a little bit of a larger campus life atmosphere. And so if that sounds like something you'd be interested, we do visits Monday through Friday, um, and we'd love to uh, tour you around campus. And uh, if you want to meet with a professor, we're more than happy to arrange one of those meetings as well. So hope to see you around campus. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tom and Yang, for sharing more about the University of St. Thomas and for starting us off tonight, too. All right, we're going to move on to our next school. We're going to learn more about St. Norbert College. All right. I'm just going to quickly share my screen. And Jen, can you see my screen? Are you going to want to take it to the full screen setting, Amanda? Yep. Sorry. Excellent. I'll, no, that's fine. I'll give you the head thumbs up to let you know that, yes, it, it's there. Sometimes it can be a little slow. We all know the technology. Yes, Again? looks great. Take it away. All right. Awesome. So hi, everyone. My name is Amanda, and I am one of the admission counselors at St. Norbert College. And I work with students from the state of Minnesota. I am from originally Minnesota, and then I also am an alum of St. Norbert. For those that don't know, St. Norbert is located about four hours east of the Twin Cities in De Pere, Wisconsin. So our location is actually one of the uh, largest re reasons in which I personally chose St. Norbert College. As you can see, we have a really beautiful waterfront campus um, that's walking distance to restaurants, coffee shops, and a variety of other kind of fun local downtown activities. Uh, in addition, you're also only about 10 minutes away from Green Bay, which is going to be the third largest city in the state of Wisconsin. So very much kind of that classic small town, but then also having access to the larger uh, uh, city of Green Bay. So a little bit about St. Norbert College. Uh, we are the only uh, Norbertine college in the entire world. So what this means is that we're pretty unique in that aspect. We follow the teachings of St. Norbert and the Norbertines are really known for their values in both radical hospitality as well as communio. Uh, radical hospitality is definitely something that you have to experience to really understand, but what it does is it creates a campus culture that I think really makes St. Norbert stand out and also really makes us unique. We're inclusive, we're very welcoming, and uh, not only to our students, but also to the rest of the De Pere and Green Bay community. In addition, the idea of Comunio really helps encourage our students to be inclusive and to respond to the needs of both our local and global communities. Um, about 89% of our students are completing some sort of service while they're a student at St. Norbert. And even though it's not required, a lot of our students will end up going above and beyond kind of that service, um, idea of service, I should say. All right, so St. Norbert, in addition to being Norbertine, is also um, a very tight-knit community, as I kind of said. So we have about 2,000 students, 89% um, or 98, excuse me, percent of them are living on campus all four years, which means that we have a very active student body. Uh, you're going to be close to your classes. It only takes about 10 minutes to walk all the way across campus. And in addition to that, um, you're going to be living kind of next door to all of your friends in the uh, De Pere community. All of your neighbors are going to be other St. Norbert students, and your uh, living options are going to range from your traditional residence hall to townhouses on the river, apartment buildings with vaulted ceilings and fireplaces, as well as college-owned houses. When you're living on that townhouse uh, right on the river, it's probably going to be the cheapest piece of waterfront property that you're ever going to be able to afford. So, because all of our students are kind of living on campus that all four years, they're also going to be very involved. We have over 100 different clubs and orgs here on campus. 
We have Greek life, rec clubs, uh, special interest groups, faith and service, academic clubs. In addition to that, we also have um, different cultural events. We have a multicultural student services, in addition to our proud to be uh, the first organization for first gen college students. If you are an athlete, we also have a place for you. About one fifth of our students are going to be athletes. We have 23 different varsity sports teams, including a well-renowned uh, hockey program, in addition to our uh, newly added men's volleyball and men's and women's swimming. So really something for everyone, lots of school spirit right on campus. But while as much fun as we have kind of being involved, there also is a variety of different academic programs. In fact, we have over uh, 80 plus programs here at St. Norbert, including our uh, pre-professional tracks, which are going to include those pre-PA, uh, pre-law, pre-engineering, um, in addition to a few others. When looking at St. Norbert, excuse me, um, we have an average class size, which is going to be right around 19 students. This allows for a lot of collaborative research, academic advising, the opportunity for study abroad, different jobs. And as I kind of mentioned, being so close to that third largest city in the state of Wisconsin, you're really gonna have access to those internships if that's something that you're interested in. Jumping back to that collaborative research, what that means for you is because we don't have any grad students working with our professors, uh, they're turning to their undergraduate students to kind of assist them with that research. 60% of our students have jobs in hand when they're walking across the stage at graduation, and then about 97% of them are employed within a year. So we kind of see all of those awesome results. In addition, over $150 million in renovations in the last 10 years. This includes our new athletic facilities, our library, our food that's ranked number fourth in the nation for our cafeteria with a build your own sushi bar right on campus as well as our Gail Mulva Science Center, which is probably our biggest renovation. We actually share a space with the Medical College of Wisconsin Green Bay. So we are the smallest liberal arts college in the country to have access to a medical school right on campus. So lots of kind of hands-on learning, including in our cadaver lab. Looking at this application, uh, St. Norbert is going to be a common app school. Um, we also have our own web application and rolling admission on our website. Uh, we are test optional for uh, this upcoming school year, and an essay is also optional, but strongly encouraged. So thank you for your time. Um, I'll drop my information in the chat, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda, for presenting on St. Norbert's today. All right, we're moving on to our next school. We're going to be learning all about Ridgewater College. All right, everyone, good evening. I was about to say good morning, but it's not good morning. Good evening. My name is Amy Berkland. I'm here from Ridgewater College and I'm an outreach and admissions specialist here to kind of just give you an overview of what we're all about here at our two year public technical and community college. We want you to know that we're your community and technical college. We are located in the towns of Wilmer, Minnesota and Hutchinson, Minnesota. Wilmer is about two hours west of the Twin Cities area, and Hutchinson is about an hour or so west of the Twin Cities area as well. We do have options for you to take classes online with us as well. To get us going here, I am going to play just a little bit of video for you so that you get an idea of what we're all about here. Finish your degree and unlock your talent you. with Maryville. We're proud Hopefully you'll that be able to see me. 96% of our online bachelor students report positive career outcomes. Be brave. Earn your degree online and power your future. Learn more now at Maryville. What does it mean to be a Ridgewater warrior? Sometimes being a warrior means not knowing exactly what the next step is, but having a place to explore the unknown. Other times, being a warrior means taking the fast track towards your passion. Either way, you'll be welcome here. At Bridgewater College, you'll find a community of students from all walks of life, all interests and pursuits. And we prefer it that way. We're a community and technical college nestled in Minnesota Lake Country that believes in an affordable, hands-on approach to help you discover all of the opportunities the world has to offer. Our small class sizes, experienced instructors, transfer pathways, student life, and postgraduate placement rates are a few of the reasons we've been named 
best community college in Minnesota by Niche.com and ranked in the top 20 community colleges in the nation. Come visit us at either of our campuses in Wilmer or Hutchinson. We'd love to show you around. So again, that's just a little sneak peek on who we are and what we're all about. Um, again, some highlights that you may have seen in your video and things that we want you to remember. We want you to know that we're an open admission campus. So if you are a student that is eager to learn and you're eager and excited to be here, we're eager and excited to have you. So we have no testing requirements required at our college, no ACT, SAT requirements at all. We offer over 100 different degree diploma and certificate options for you in career and technical education, as well as liberal arts education. So we can help you get going in any, any sort of trade or program right away where you want to get out into the workforce after two years, or we can help you get the first two years of any four-year bachelor's degree education. We offer a variety of student life activities. We offer varsity athletics as well as on our, on our campuses as well. We offer an affordable education for you, um, so won't be spending for your entire degree. You will spend an awful lot less here. So um, experienced faculty here as well. Everyone who is teaching you um, has done the work before. So if you're coming to learn how to be an electrician, a vet technician, a professional photographer, a welder, all of our faculty have done the job before and are ready and willing to teach you. Some of our popular majors are listed here for you. We have a liberal arts degree. Again, that's designed to help get you the first two years of any four-year education. You can get that done right here. Um, electrician, we have a lot of agriculture programs, computer support technology for those of you wanting to learn how to fix and manipulate computers. We have a veterinary technology program. You might've seen some animals in that promo video. Um, we can help you get going in an animal career as well. We have a non-destructive testing program on our Hutchinson campus, machine tool technology, automation and robotics, welding, computer aided drafting and design, early childhood, nursing, medical assisting, cosmetology, massage therapy. We have way more programs than just that, but those are some of our highlights that um, really stand out to students when they come to visit. Dollars and cents, we're the education you want at the right price. So a standard tuition and fees for us is 197 per credit. A typical semester for any student is about 15 credits. Um, so one semester tuition and fees, you're looking at about $3,000. Um, for a full school year with us, you're at about $6,000 for a full school year. So put that together. Most of our degrees are two years. You'll be at about $12,000 and out the door with a degree, which is awesome. We want you to come and visit us. Um, there's only so much we get to cover in six minutes and we have way more that we wanna to talk to you about. We wanna let you know about our upcoming campus visit day, which is Discover Ridgewater. That's gonna be happening Friday, October 29th in Hutchinson and Saturday, October 30th in Wilmer. The event is gonna run from 10 to 1 p.m. It allows you guys to come and visit our program areas. Maybe you wanna learn something specific um, about our college, but you'll get to meet faculty, tour our facilities, um, check out any of our programs that stand out to you. RSVP for the event at ridgewater.edu slash discover. We can't wait to see you on that day. Otherwise, if those two dates listed don't work for you, um, private warrior visits are always available as well. The Wilmer campus has daily campus tours at 10 and 2 p.m. You are welcome to come in and meet with me or any other of our other admission specialists to learn more about a program area of interest to you. Make that appointment online by visiting ridgewater.edu slash visit. I see my time is running up. So here I am, and this is all my contact information. I can't wait to meet you on campus. Awesome, thank you so much, Amy, for sharing with Ridgewater College with all of us today. All right, well, we have heard from three great schools. We have three more to go. So just want to remind our attendees about the Q&A box. So don't forget, you can drop some questions in there. All right. So we are now going to learn about Carroll University. Stacey?
I just realized I'm talking, but my microphone's not on. I'm sorry, everybody. I was just about to say, I, we can see, uh, but I, I can see you and I can see the screen, but I can't quite hear you yet. So. Perfect. I'm Perfect. sorry about that. Hi, I'm Stacy Carpenter. I am from Carroll University. Carroll is in Waukesha, Wisconsin. So we're about five hours away from the Twin Cities. We're about 20 minute drive from Milwaukee or from Lake Michigan. So we are an option for students from Minnesota who are looking to go away for college. We kind of have that traditional residential college feel where students can move away, live in the dorms, um, be part of that college campus culture. We were actually the first university in Wisconsin. So Carroll University is actually older than the whole state of Wisconsin itself. We've been there longer than Wisconsin even has. So part of what that means is it's kind of this look that you can see on the screen. It's a lot of stone buildings and brick buildings, big trees, kind of that sort of classic college look. Uh -huh. Sorry, there we go. I wanted to talk about academics a little bit. So we do have 95 different programs of study. So there are lots of options out there for students who are undecided and want to go to a college where they can explore when they're there. But I'm going to talk a lot today about some specific programs, either some majors that we're really well known for, and then also some things that are really unique. So you can kind of look at those if that's something that's interesting to you. So one of the things that's kind of unique at Carroll is something called the Carroll Three program. And this is an accelerated program of study. And it's for students who are graduating from high school with at least eight college credits. So if you're a student who is doing AP classes, IB, dual enrollment, PSEO, those kinds of things, and you're able to earn eight college credits before you graduate, you can apply for an accelerated program of study at Carroll in any of these 21 majors. And you can see that kind of some of those classic majors, um, things like political science and psychology and history and math. Um, so that is a great option for students. It's a huge tuition savings. So at a private university to be able to graduate in three years instead of four is really a huge savings. Um, in addition, it's, it's really, you're, you're accelerating yourself. So it's really focused on those students who already are moving forward quickly and wanna keep on going with that. In addition, Carol's really well known for our health sciences. So while we have 95 different programs of study, 60% of our students are studying some kind of healthcare field. And so that is a real strength area for us. Nursing is actually our biggest major. Part of the reason for that is um, our nursing program is ranked very highly. Um, at the end of a nursing program, students take a test called the NCLEX exam. And 100% of our 2020 graduates passed that exam and that's kind of rare. So that's something to look for if you're looking at some nursing programs. In addition, we've got a direct admission nursing program, which means if you apply to college as a high school student and you want to be in the nursing program, we will let you know immediately upon your application if you're accepted into that nursing program instead of doing pre-nursing where some colleges will have you start college and then after your first year tell you whether you're accepted into the nursing program. We also have some really cool direct admission programs that can lead you all the way through to your graduate level program. So for example, you can get a master of science in athletic training, a master's in occupational therapy, even a doctorate in physical therapy with direct admission from high school. So if you are an outstanding student who is going into one of those fields and would like to apply as a high school student to be accepted all the way through, some students who are really in a good place in high school are accepted all the way through so they know they're guaranteed a spot in that doctorate program or that master's program. And you can see all of those programs that have numbers after those are also accelerated. So a lot of them are doing three-year undergraduate study and then you're moving directly into that doctorate or that master's program. Again, with a lot of health science programs, we really focus in on some of those pre-professional programs too. So if you're planning to go on to graduate school for pre-med, for medical school, if you're pre-vet, pre-pharmacy, those kinds of things, we have something called a health science bound initiative where our students are working with advisors specifically um, targeting towards those pre-healthcare occupations to help them find research opportunities, to help them connect with professors, explore the medical fields, things like that. These are also some of our unique programs at Carroll. So I just wanted to point these out because these can be hard to find at colleges if any of them are interesting to you. Um, for example, like that marine sciences degree, you do not find very often in the Midwest because you need an ocean to study marine sciences. So at Carroll, how we do that is our students attend Carroll in Wisconsin for the first two years. And then we actually send them to Hawaii for their last two years so that they can be at the ocean and study marine life. 
The last thing I'll talk about is our cross-cultural experience. So this is something that students in every major at Carroll are required to do before they graduate. They're required to have some kind of experience where they're able to explore a new culture. You don't have to go abroad for this, but because it's built into the curriculum, 70% of Carroll students choose to go abroad during their years at Carroll. So that's really amazing to get that opportunity and to have the time built in to go to another country. Um, our students have lots of options for where they can go. Some of them are short options, like a two week that you're going with your class and with your professor to another country. And other times they're going for a whole semester or a whole year. Our admissions is open. We have uh, an application on the Carroll website, but we're also on Common App if you'd like to apply that way. We are test optional. So if you have questions about whether or not to submit a test score, you're welcome to contact me and I'm happy to help you figure some of that out. Otherwise, my contact information is there. So I look forward to being able to hear from some of you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Stacey, for sharing Carol with all of us tonight. Okay, we're on to our next school. We're going to be learning about Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Hello everyone. So I am Scott Hochhalter. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions uh, for the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Uh, we do go by MCAD and we are a small private nonprofit institution um, just south of downtown Minneapolis in the Whittier neighborhood. Uh, we are uh, nestled close to each street and that's kind of a uh, diverse cultural and ethnic food uh, destination within the Twin Cities. Um, do you want to say that, you know, our vision is uh, maybe a little bit different. We are pretty open and encourage a lot of exploration, but we um, are also very uh, targeted and focused as a school. Um, being an art school, uh, we are, you know, trying to really embolden you to be the best that you can be in your practice. Um, it is our goal to get you out into the real world and um, work on animation or film or the things that really excite you. We want to make sure that um, you are getting the experiences and honing your experiences so that you can go out and um, be a productive uh, member of the creative community. And um, creativity is one of the most important things uh, that you can learn and improve upon no matter what you go into. So we do offer um, these 14 different areas of study, everything from fine art to media art, as well as design. Um, just a couple of things of note, we are um, highly ranked both for graphic design as well as animation. Uh, comic art is pretty uncommon uh, if you kind of go across uh, different areas. Um, we are one of only very few schools that offer that as well as entrepreneurial studies. Uh, you can think of sort of an arts meets business degree. So um, why would you choose a specialty art school? Again, we are really going to make sure that uh, you get the experiences. Uh, as a small private school, you have a very small student to faculty ratio. Um, and we expect that you step into that professional artist environment. Um, we want you to be artists and designers um, from the very start. And we're gonna help you um, achieve that. So we have about 800 students total. Uh, you can see a breakdown of the different departments that they work um, in. And you can see we have a lot of first generation students as well and transfer students. Um, great student to faculty ratio. Uh, I think it's very important to say that about three quarters of our alumni are working in the fields that they uh, studied. So um, we are again, trying to get you out. If your goal is to be a graphic designer, um, be a fine art painter, we want to give you those experiences so that you are going and pursuing those things. You can see that we award a lot of money. Um, we, we, of course, do cost more than an average education, but we are also trying to subsidize that and give you um, a lot of money back as well. So our current scholarships range from $13,000 up to $24,000, and they are renewable for up to four years. So that's all the way up to $96,000. Um, so 
couple of other cool things. Um, compared to other art schools, we are open 24 seven. You are able to apply for your own studio space and get that your second year. Um, we're quirky. We have um, bees on the roof. Uh, you can live on campus. We have apartment style dorms. Um, so you have your own uh, kitchen, your own bathroom. You have floating pizza. Um, you can eat in the bathroom. Um, we were also founded in 1886 through the Minneapolis Institute of Art. So we have um, that foundation as well as the greater ongoing um, connection with different artists and musicians and theater and culture. Um, the Twin Cities are a really, really bustling uh, place to be an artist and be in the creative scene. So a further back uh, or further breakdown of our students, um, you can see most of our students um, are female. We do have uh, some male and some non-binary students. About a third of our students are uh, students of color and indigenous students. Um, and that we do have support services for all of our students. We want um, this to be an open and inclusive community again, um, where you can learn and thrive. So there's no real weird at MCAT. Um, I love this quote. Uh, we are you know, trying to get really uh, good students and people who aspire to be really good artists and designers. Um, and this is a creative place. It's a very open, nurturing. Um, you're going to find uh, a good group of people who are going to help support you. So um, I do want to say that if you have any questions, um, you can, uh, of course, look at our website, mcat.edu. Uh, otherwise, our general email is admissions at mcat.edu. Uh, you will get rerouted to the appropriate admissions counselor. Uh, we have plenty of um, opportunities to come to campus, um, very small groups uh, this fall still. Um, but we also are hosting a National Portfolio Day. So we do want you to come and bring some work um, and get critique and it should be a positive uplifting experience. And um, we again, just want to make that connection with you. So thank you for your time. Wonderful, thank you so much, Scott, for sharing MCAD with everyone this evening. All right, we're on to our Sixth school, we're going to be hearing from Mayville State University. Oh. Alyssa, we can see you and you aren't muted, but I can't hear you. Do you have um, any check the sound setting? If you have any um, earbuds or headphones in the office, sometimes just plugging that rating can help. Um, Thanks everyone for your patience. Even after we've been on our Zoom lives for so long, we all know technology can get us on any day. So thanks for your patience, hold tight, and we're gonna get this uh, situated. Can you hear me, hear me now or no? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. And then let me see, I have, there we go. Okay, can you guys see that screen? It's coming and let me, yep, yep, yep there okay. you go. Perfect, all right. So I am going to talk about Mayville State, you know, with the little time that I do have. Um, I'm just going to go right into it on this first page right here. It gives you a brief overview of Mayville as saying that it's about 1200 kids. Um, half of those kids are actually on campus. So it's a little bit over 600. So a pretty small campus for being a four year university. Um, 62% of our students are from North Dakota. If you add Minnesota into that, it's about 80%. So it's a very, I would say local um, college. So very small class sizes, it's about 12, but we do offer a lot of majors and minors. It's about 80 plus and some you could take as majors, obviously some you could take as minors. And we do also offer some pre-professional programs if you wanna go into something like that as well. We have more females on campus than males because we're dominated by teaching and nursing, and usually those are dominated by females. Um, on this right side right here, it'll list all of those majors and minors for you. Um, this whole booklet will be available for you at mavelstate.edu. And then we'll go on to this next page, just some overall campus life. We offer a lot of clubs. Um, they could range from being on the athletic team or being in a science club or our most, our most 
famous biggest club is DECA and it's a business club and they go and they um, they compete for awards and they give speeches and it really helps develop these business majors into good speakers and workers for their future outside of Mayville State. Um, on this right side right here, we are an NAIA school. We are a part of the North Star Conference and we only offer, I would say the main six sports, volleyball, basketball, softball on the women's side, on the men's side, uh, basketball, football, and baseball. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit weird with the NAI when it comes to sports is that you have to sign up to play. But as you can see, we um, give you a code that sends it right to Mayville. So you'll never have any trouble getting it to us. Um, on this next page right here, it breaks down the cost of tuition and financial aid and also scholarships. Mayville State being a four-year university is on the cheaper side compared to a lot of other universities for Minnesota residents, it's a little bit over what it is to like go to school here if you're from North Dakota, but it's still a really good price. You're looking at $13,000 and that's not even with scholarships yet. Um, scholarships are available to you. They're always online as well. I feel like if you take one thing from me speaking today, it's just apply for scholarships, no matter what college you end up at. We offer seven scholarships. Our most popular, I would say, is this endowed foundation scholarship. That's where a majority of the money comes from when uh, kids apply for them. And if we go back to this left side right here, it breaks down tuition, student fees, and room and board, which if you look at the numbers, aren't very high compared to other colleges either. Um, at Mayville State, as coming in as a freshman, we accept um, unofficial transcripts. We just have to have a picture making sure that you are in these four main curriculars, knowing that you're gonna get those done. Um, we have a $35 application fee. It's not too expensive at all. Uh, we also don't accept or you don't need to turn in your ACT scores if you have them, you know, it's nice to send them in because it'll put you on closer to the top of our list um, and set you apart from the other people as well. Um, on campus, we don't, once you get to your graduation day, we don't have graduation fees, we don't have parking fees, we don't have other fees outside of just tuition, room and board, and a meal plan really. On this next page, we do offer extended learning online. Uh, the prices of classes are priced differently than in-seat classes, but it's not too much of a different cost. So you could attend Mabel State, even if you live in Minnesota and you don't wanna move away from home, you could still attend Mabel State with these online degrees. And we do distance learning as well, studying abroad with the University of Norway. I personally have had some friends who have gone overseas and gone and done that experience and they loved it and it's totally transferable and it won't hurt you in any way if that's something you decide to do. We also offer a writing center, which is ran by our English majors. You type up the paper, you send it in and they fix the mistakes for you before you have to turn it in for your class. We also have an IT service desk and it's free to you anytime. Your computer crashes, you could take that in. And we offer free tutoring. If you're really good in a certain subject, you could also tutor yourself and you could get paid for that through the school as well. And we have wellness centers, which is like a gym, open to every student, health services. There's a nurse on campus five days a week and new this year and last year. This is last year's um, book and the prices haven't really changed, but um, we do offer esports team and they offer scholarships as well. So if you're into video games or anything like that, then there is a place here for you. But um, overall, I would say Mabel's just very personable. You have a one-on-one -on -one connection with your professors and all the other people around you. And it's a great place to be in a little town. Thanks guys. Thanks both so much for sharing Mabel State with all of us. All right, well, we still have a few minutes uh, together before we wrap up. And so I wanted to take the, this opportunity to make sure that any of our representatives who want to um, share their contact information can put that into the chat. 
uh, to send to our attendees and for attendees to be able to grab that. And also uh, time to reflect on any last questions um, that any attendees might wanna submit in the Q&A. Um, so while we're doing that, I'd love to have one representative from each school come back on camera um, so we can do a live Q&A question together. So we're gonna go in the exact same order that uh, you presented in. So um, we're going to start with the University of St. Thomas, then we'll head to St. Norbert College, and then on down our list. Um, when the person ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your microphone and answer the question. I won't call you in between. Um, so the question is, advice you would give to someone going through the college search process? I know you all have some amazing top tips um, that you can share. So University of St. Thomas, yeah. take a clap. Thank you. Great question. What advice would I give someone who is going through the application process, correct? For me, I think in terms of, I think it's very important um, to utilize the essay um, components. Um, some institutions, the essay might be optional, but I really encourage students to really um, write an essay because it's a chance for you to really let us know who you are, but not only that, but to really bring light into what you want to bring into the institution. Um, I always like to say that at St. Thomas, we don't want students to just assimilate. We want students to, you know, bring a piece of them uniqueness to really help us grow and change. And so utilize that essay to really explain that, to shine a light and to really basically boast about yourself, right? So that way we can see that, oh, this particular student, they're going to be able to leave a legacy at St. Thomas by doing potentially X, Y, and Z based on their interests. And so definitely utilize that essay um, and even though it's optional, it will definitely help your application. So that would be my advice. Don't just leave it um, as something to do afterwards. So thank you so much for the question. Yeah, so I would uh, say don't be afraid to go look at the biggest school you could ever see yourself going to. Don't be afraid to go look at the smallest school you could ever see yourself going to and then somewhere in between. Um, tour schools because that's the best way you're going to be able to kind of really get a feel for the campus, especially when students are there. So, Yeah, that would be my advice to make sure that you're getting out and seeing these schools and tour and ask your questions along the way. Um, all of us are here to help you figure out what it is that you're meant to do. So that would be my advice um, for sure. I'm going to add on to that just to say, in addition to doing an on-campus visit, which is amazing, one of the things that has happened after the pandemic is that a whole lot of schools are doing virtual visits. So you don't have to leave home and travel to do a visit to colleges these days. You can log on to their website and colleges will have virtual visits by video, but also a lot of them, like we have iPads that students will bring you around campus and show you what it looks like. And so to do a virtual visit like that anywhere you're looking really broadens your range that you can look all kinds of places. Well, that's perfect. I just want to add on that. Um, uh, in addition to like virtual tours, we're also doing webinars, including students. Um, so it could be a create your own comic character or it could be documenting your um, artwork. So I think different schools are trying out different um, opportunities that engage students in new ways. Um, also look on Instagram for uh, Instagram and other social media um, to find alumni and feel free to reach out to them and talk to them um, about the schools you're interested in. I would definitely go off of that and say social media it's such a big thing especially with your guys's generation coming in too um and just my biggest piece of advice is don't be afraid to venture out don't be afraid to look at a school far away from home because you know you can get a lot of real world experience from moving away from your hometown Awesome. I love all of this advice and uh, I hope that it helps our attendees to pause and say, okay, how do I want to plan? What resources can I use? Um, and I want to echo, I can't remember who mentioned it, but the asking the questions. I hope tonight shows you that admission counselors are real people. They are excited. There is no question that's too small or too silly or whatever you might think about it. Just ask because there is so much more to learn about each of these schools beyond these six minutes. And everyone here, all of their colleagues, they love their job. They live for those questions to help you learn what you really want to know, what your family really wants to know in this uh, college search journey. Well, we have reached the end of our time together tonight. So first, I want to just say thank you so much to all of our admissions representatives for not just sharing the facts and the figures, 
about your campuses, but just your obvious excitement and energy for the student experience on and off campus. Thank you to everyone who watched, whether live or watching the recording later. We hope this is inspiring you to ask questions, follow up, dig in a little more about each of these um, amazing schools. Now for the logistics of the end. When you close your window, there'll be a link to a very quick five question survey. I promise students, it's really short. And um, we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We also wanna remind you again that this session has been recorded as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com Minnesota. That website where you signed up is where you can find them and they'll be posted in the coming days. So we hope that you will enjoy following up and uh, learning more about great schools. I hope everyone's had a wonderful night. Thank you again for being here and best wishes in your college search and journey throughout this whole year.